Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Special report! In July of 1999, the world was first introduced to SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. At first considered too bizarre for mainstream success, it has become one of the most popular television shows in history. Join us as we discover how this little yellow sponge became a worldwide phenomenon. It's not only a program, it's become a lifestyle for a lot of people. I don't think we can possibly overestimate how much this has penetrated American culture. SpongeBob is the coolest thing on the planet. So how many times you watch a cartoon, you get a big belly laughs, and you feel good about it? I mean, I like the fact that he's yellow. I like the fact that he's porous. I'm hydrodynamically designed. I like the fact that he wears pants. You can be any age, any race, any type of person, and you can relate to this character. <laughs> Dude, you have split my sides. It was as though the territory that had been once dominated by Mickey Mouse was now being rehabilitated by SpongeBob SquarePants. The central character is a sponge with distinctive taste in trousers. He's the top show on a top cable channel running several times a day. In animation, there are just so many hurdles, so many obstacles, so many difficult challenges. How do you know that your audience is going to take to a, a sponge character? I mean, wow, that's, that's quite a leap. My name's Steve Hillenberg, and I'm the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants. I've always been fascinated with the ocean. It's just a, a place that is unlike anywhere on the planet, and there's unexplored areas and animals and plants that we don't even know about still. I stepped on one of these once. I think my interest in the ocean started with those documentaries that Jacques Cousteau did. It was like looking at another planet. Once more, I drift downward for the blue spaces of the sea. I ended up getting a job right there, teaching marine biology, my dream job. Also, I was kind of like the staff artist. I was drawing a comic book about tide pool animals. It was in that comic that I drew the first sponge named Bob, which eventually would become SpongeBob. I decided I wanted to do a show about one character that was innocent, well-meaning, and kind of an oddball. Especially at the time SpongeBob came out, there were a lot of shows that were sarcastic. They had characters who were almost like little adults. There's no question that, you know, when you look at the 90s, the things that were connecting were the South Parks and uh, and the Ren and Stippy, and that was great, and it is what made SpongeBob so distinctively different. I think SpongeBob was an attempt instead to make a character who's genuine and earnest. I think that's something people really connected with. There is an innocence, a, a naivete, and a sincerity to it that you get practically no place else on the television dial. 
His name is SpongeBob SquarePants, and his friend's name is Patrick. Mr. Krabs is really cheap, but SpongeBob doesn't care because he just likes being a fry cook and making Krabby yes, Patties. So, 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 bottom line, he's a sponge. <laughs> they said, we've got it, we've got it. And they said, what do you got? And they said, we have something yellow and square. It's a sponge. You're going to love it. And I was like, okay. I'm not sure there was a lot of confidence in the idea that it was going to go anywhere. How do I make the biggest show in the world? <laughs> you know, I think if you try to synthesize that, then there's no way that you can succeed at it. I had no idea what was going on with this cartoon. I just thought it was just some inane pulp for preschoolers. That's the lamest idea I have ever heard. When I heard the initial concept for it, I said, those guys must be crazy. <gasps> Take that back. SpongeBob SquarePants? That just sounds weird. There's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of risk, there's a lot of money riding on this, and a lot of people, jobs, all involved with this kind of thing. I just wanted it to be funny, and I didn't want to be embarrassed for anything that I made. There's a lot of executives that would have taken one look at that and said, you've got to be kidding, you're going to put this hallucination on our air? No. Ultimately, it's the audience that decides. They are the ones that have the final say in the success and failure of what we do. The audience is the ultimate jury on any show. There's a lot of cartoonists who have ideas for cartoon shows. Nickelodeon, as, as daring as they are with the kind of shows they do, you know, each one is a risk. Ah, the sea, so fascinating, so wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life, home of one of my favorite creatures, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple, you silly. There's no science to funny. The things that uh, strike you as funny, they either strike you as funny or they don't. <laughs> Let's face it, this is one weird puppy of a TV show. These characters are strange, they behave in really strange ways. Things that look like snails, meow like cats. It was so different, we just didn't quite know what to expect. But when we viewed the pilot, I mean, it was nonstop laughter. looking at each other and going, is anybody going to get this but us? I mean, is this just entertaining to us? Or, or you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. We have an excellent SpongeBob, I can't even say it. I don't know if Mark can. SquarePants, SpongeBob, you know, the cartoon guy. It took a couple of seasons. We were just going about our business, making a show that we thought was hilarious. For the first year or two or three, he was kind of quietly on the network, gaining building his audience. It wasn't in the papers. I don't remember anybody making a big deal about it. Anytime a family with kids came over, I'd say, I've got something I want you to watch. And everyone loved it. I thought, oh man, please, someone recognize this besides me. We're doing jokes where, you know, they're so surreal and you're thinking, no one's gonna get this. But I guess more people than you would think got it. SpongeBob SquarePants. That's it? Get it together. Get it, He's the greatest. It. His buddy Squidward. Yes. A little yellow sponge who's making a big splash. I mean, it is the biggest, most powerful argument for just being open to where your your passions bring you. And, you know, look, look where they brought Steve. Steve's passions were animation and the ocean. He called me to come over to his place, then he showed me what he had. Drawings, watercolor treatments of SpongeBob's pineapple house and uh, Squidward's big Easter Island tiki head house and the Krusty Krab lobster trap. I just fell in love with the characters, the visuals, the relationships between the characters and I just wanted to be in on it so bad. Steve and I started on Rocco's Modern Life. That's where I met Steve. 
We had sort of a meeting of the minds as far as comedy, what we thought was funny. There were a lot of ideas Steve wanted to do on Rocco that we eventually got to do on Spongebob, um, like the live action cutaways. And the only way out is through the perfume department. It was sort of like, well, if any of us gets our own show, we're going to do all that stuff. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I always hate going in there. Yeah. There was a conscious effort to emulate what we grew up on. We all wanted to do that kind of cartoon. SpongeBob is a really well-crafted show, and part of that is the use of squash and stretch. You know, pulling and squeezing. They can flatten him like a pancake. They can do anything with him. I'm absorbing his blows like I was made of some kind of spongy material. It's incredibly funny. And there's just fantastic writing and great storyboarding. You know, these are the elements of classic animation. We love Bugs Bunny and we talked about these things. Wasn't that awesome the way this worked and this happened? And we used to talk it out for hours and hours. That kind of thing goes back to the old classic movie cartoons and the theatrical cartoons and the Bugs Bunnies, the things that were done in the 40s and 50s that haven't been done in decades. We're trying to stay true to that, what we loved about cartoons when we were young. I'm sorry, Mr. Krabs. Uh, could you run that by me again? Sure. I said I'm worried that more blocks were my little That's what I thought you said. Now let me offer this as a rebuttal. Ah! Donna. What? What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? I'm busy, I tell you. I'm busy. <laughs> you know, Mark Twain said, make your vocation a vacation. <laughs> Animation's a lot of work, so I definitely felt like, hey, we're going to be here every day. We might as well be enjoying it. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. There was a sign on my door that said, have fun or you're fired. And I think, in a way, it's true. <laughs> It was a joke, but, you know. If it's for fire that burns down the whole town, use for uranium bombs. And it's for no survivors when you... Right, done. Those things aren't what fun is all about. Well, if you take your leg and you stick it in the air. We just thought it would be fun to take a day to the aquarium in Long Beach, maybe getting some ideas and see some of the things that people were drawing every day. Squidward's his name, but he's an octopus. I like the round head, but Squidward is funnier than Octo Boy. Steve's a great collaborator, and he was real open to our ideas, and everyone was just really excited to be making a show that was so different. He puts a, a, a farmer's hat and starts milking the, the little jellyfish. It's my dance. The clarinet on fire, and they're doing this like tribal dance around it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most brilliant things Steve did on the show is choosing the group that's on the show. It is kind of like a relay race, you know? We have writers and then they hand their thing off to the storyboard artist. We take what's written here and we think of jokes that maybe you couldn't explain in writing. That gets handed off to the cast and then that gets handed off to the animators. One episode includes about 20,000 drawings. You have to do it all by hand. The single goal that everyone who works on the show has in mind is just bringing all they can to their little piece of the pie. Along the way, it's snowballing, you know, picking up everyone's input along the way. And I feel very lucky because I feel like everyone really just is focused on how do we make this the best SpongeBob cartoon that we can. Meow. Okay, places, everybody. Squidward, are our heroes ready? Has there ever been? Start the movie. Yeah! Hard are still! You heard the little yellow square guy? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Very good. Stand by for pickups on that. My name is Andrea Romano, 
and I'm the voice director for SpongeBob SquarePants. Cartoons are made by recording a vocal track first. The animation comes afterwards. Somebody has to tell the actors what's going on, how loud they need to be, what does that oof stand for. The characters are the most important part of the show. As crazy as they are, you would like to be their friend too. The great thing is, is that we were given such a wonderful set of characters. They're an ensemble that, that you can just milk endlessly. I'm Carolyn Lawrence, and I play Sandy Cheeks on SpongeBob SquarePants. Sandy is a squirrel. She's a land squirrel, but she's living in the ocean as a scientist. She's very bright. She's very motivated, as squirrels are. She likes to do karate. My name is Bill Fagerbaki. I am the voice of Patrick Starr. I think Bill is the smartest dumb guy ever. What do you mean? He plays a dumb guy so well. Now put it on the lid. No, the lid. 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 Almost there. Now head for the lid. Cold. Warmer. 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 You're hot. You're on fire. Oh, it burns. Okay, okay, wait, wait. He's the only person I've seen in fiction or documentary that I feel smarter than. You know, the world thinks Patrick, you know, has nothing going on upstairs and that he's a doofus. SpongeBob doesn't put down Patrick. He thinks Patrick's a pretty smart, happening guy. My name is Clancy Brown, and I play Mr. Krabs on Good Days. If I could be any character on the show, it'd be, it'd be uh, Mr. Krabs. Look at all this cash! Hey, look at all this money! Hey, hope me I can take it. Where? I'm all right, sonny. He got all the money. He always want more. <laughs> Let's see. A five-letter word for happiness. Money. It's all about me, money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> Mr. Krabs, can I have a raise? No. <laughs> and all of it for me. I always say Squidward is me in a comic sense. I'm not that sarcastic. Oh, really? Squidward had a Krabby body. <sighs> Welcome to the Krusty Krab, where it's almost as if the evolutionary clock ticks backward. His laugh, oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, Squidward is mostly grumpy because SpongeBob is always bothering him. Living between Patrick and SpongeBob, Squidward is the recipient of all the craziness, and he's the one that gets hurt and knocked down and humiliated in the end. Ah! Ow. My name is Mr. Lawrence. I uh, play Plankton on SpongeBob. SpongeBob, you will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite character is Plankton. Plankton. Plankton, of course. This little tiny character, but he's got this big voice. I win! He has one goal in his life. He really wants it to make a Krabby Patty. It's destroying him. <laughs> All hail Plankton! All hail Plankton! Oh, oh, I'm ready. Oh, oh, promotion. Oh, oh, I'm ready. Oh, oh, promotion. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I think I stepped in something. As soon as people found out I was working on it, they all went so crazy. Actors asking me, please, can you find something for me on SpongeBob? I'll come in and play a fish who just goes, mm, because they want to be a part of it. They want to be able to say to their kid there was a part of it. A grown man came up to me, oh, you're so famous. And I said, well, happy days, you know. He said, no. He said, you're SpongeBob SquarePants grandma. Come here and give your granny her kissy kissy. My name is Tim Conway. It used to be uh, Betty, 
but I had to change it, you know, to, uh, in the business and everything. Will you stop calling me boy? My granddaughter said, you know, have you seen SpongeBob? And I said, I don't think so. And she said, you know, you're on it. So I tuned in and by golly, she was right. Time to come out of retirement. There's evil afoot. Evil. There it is. <laughs> I've had older people come up, old men. Are you Mermaid Man? You're Mermaid Man? I said, I'm Mermaid Man. Oh, my goodness. I meet him in person. How about that? <laughs> now it's time to bring it around town. Bring it around town. I've had the great good fortune to work with Tom Kenny on many different series, but this show is really Tom Kenny's show. He is SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> My name is Tom Kenny, and for the last uh, dozen years or so, I have been the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. That's really fascinating. There's a little bit of Tom in the character. You know, there's an innocence and a well-meaning attitude that I think Tom emanates. I think his silliness, the actor's silliness, absolutely is incorporated into the character. Bye. He really represents the 10-year-old in all of us who's got a day off from school. He lives in the moment, he's very childlike, and he takes things as they come. He can change it to different things. And this, and this, and that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and that. I like that he always believes the best in people. He'll never see that Squidward's crabby. It just won't ever happen. He just, you know, that's his buddy. It all comes from an honest place. I think one of the most appealing things about SpongeBob is his lack of fear and his lack of negative emotions. And in the world that we live in now, he is a beacon of how to be happy in this world. The flip side of that is that when he does occasionally hit a wall, he just falls apart. And now I've lost the only job I ever wanted! <laughs> his lows are just as precipitous as his highs. SpongeBob throws himself into everything 110%, not because of what reward he's going to glean at the end, but just because he can't help but be that way. From episode to episode, these characters maintain their personalities. Those personalities are winning and appealing, and that really helps to account for the universal popularity of the show. <laughs> He lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah. So nice and he's yellow and he's spongy. There he is. Bring SpongeBob. <laughs> There's a SpongeBob phenomenon. There's nobody cooler than you, SpongeBob. Hi, we're from underwater. Kids of all ages have been wondering what is going on at Bikini Bottom. Have you seen SpongeBob? Oh, it's so, he's cuddly. I don't know. This becomes a kind of a cult-like following. Bob. It's always tough to figure out what makes a phenomenon, because who knows? The Sea Dwelling cartoon character on Nickelodeon is the second highest rated show for kids on TV. Everyone, you may not know this, but we just got picked up for second season. We hoped it would go one season. We hoped it would go two seasons. You figure you do the best you can, and 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 you hope and on top of that we got third season yeah! it ultimately became one of the biggest shows in the history of television Yay! it's an optimistic invertebrate who nickelodeon reports is attracting 28 million viewers a month this crazy kitchen sponge in a tie and a pair of private school shorts has managed to penetrate the culture in a way that very, very few other things have done. Hey, you! Top of the morning, oldster. Hey, I saw you on TV last night. New Brand Flakes. Bold new taste. Brand Flakes. You did? I don't know if you guys caught this, but uh, there's a poll in this week's Us Weekly. It's about the, uh, the sexiest stars around. In sixth place, true, SpongeBob SquarePants. And in seventh place, just behind this sexy character, 
not quite as sexy as SpongeBob, our own Simon Cowell. It got to a point where you couldn't turn on the TV without seeing SpongeBob, and not just on Nickelodeon. Happy Halloween, everyone. In case you couldn't tell, I'm Katie SpongeBob Kirk. You have to have SpongeBob, so I made a SpongeBob. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. I think you'll agree. <laughs> Who doesn't love SpongeBob? It just suddenly was everywhere. The rest of the world has finally caught on. I took a trip to Europe, and right on top of the garbage, there was a little juice box with SpongeBob giving the thumbs up and winking. I went on a surf trip to Sumatra, and I look up and I see this schoolgirl, this little schoolgirl, and I see this bag, this bright pink bag, and it's a bootleg SpongeBob bag. And I just, I just couldn't believe it. SpongeBob appeals to people everywhere, all around the world. He is an inanimate object that we can all project ourselves onto. And we are SpongeBob super fans. Yeah! In the world of cartoons, it's as big as it comes. And now, getting bigger. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Who are you? I'm David Hasselhoff. Hello. Yes, I saw the movie and I liked it a lot. I will never know how SpongeBob learned all those lines. How did he absorb so much? He used to be Knight Rider and was always Baywatch, but now it's SpongeBob with a whole generation of kids who never saw Knight Rider. It's awesome. We chose to do a movie, and the show took a hiatus. Now we had Paramount, a big movie studio, and they had to be responsible, and they were they're gonna approve everything, and I was trying to explain that this is the movie process, and he's like, Albie, that's all fine, but if it's not with my team, we're not making a movie. We did make it. Yeah. I guess we did. <laughs> we did all right for a couple of goofballs. I don't think Steve knew that this would become as big a show as it, as it would. I don't think any of us knew that. We didn't really expect the kind of uh, reaction that we've gotten worldwide, and we were just trying to make ourselves laugh. And the rest is gravy. If something is culturally successful, it means, almost by definition, that you have got a lot of people who are committed to it. Things that really, really reach success are also, you know, the, the ones that are likely to be targeted. Is something about SpongeBob that whispers gay? <gasps> Valentine present in the whole world now, SpongeBob! Well, this is where you're gonna get it! After it had been on for a couple of years, there were a few episodes that somehow acted as a Rorschach card for some people, where they would watch the show and they would say, wait a minute, these characters are gay. One of the channel's most popular characters is coming under attack, from family values advocate James Dobson for his insidious pro-homosexual agenda. Which character? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> You have to bring up the James Dobson thing, because it was this bizarre bump in the SpongeBob road. Dobson told a mostly congressional audience in January that SpongeBob SquarePants was, quote, pro-homosexual. How do we know that he's gay? We don't know anything about SpongeBob. <laughs> Except that he lives in a pineapple under the sea. It becomes a lightning rod for people, and they see different things in it, and it becomes the stimulus for national discussion. Trick or treat, darling. No treats for you, SpongeBob queer pants. I gotta be honest, I thought it was the greatest. <laughs> I loved it. The show did nothing to discourage that. I remember one time they were wrestling for the Fry Cook games, and they found out that they were wearing each other's color underwear. You do care. 
wasn't like when the, they threw the Beatles records in a big bonfire, you know, they, everyone in the town came out with their records. <laughs> nobody wanted to hear it. They, nobody showed up to the bonfire. All I'm saying is, why is he wearing pants? He hasn't got genitals. We're not even talking about sex at all. Kids seem to get it. It's only certain adults that don't get it. You know, I, I think it did help, and it did kind of give SpongeBob this kind of cultural hipness. I think in a way it's a tribute to the show because it has become such an icon of our family existence. You're my best friend ever. <laughs> you too, Patrick. You know, these were white when I bought them. How did I become president of the SpongeBob SquarePants fan club? I elected myself, and luckily I accepted, graciously. Why do I love SpongeBob so much? Uh, why do I breathe the salty sea air? Why do I drink a flag and a grog? Uh, who knows? It just feels right for me. My name is Kristen Flores. I've been working on SpongeBob for about two years. This here is a pile of fan mail. Dear SpongeBob and Patrick, I really like your movie because it is funny. Dear Steven Hillenburg, my name is Jose. We watch SpongeBob every day. We also watch it in the morning. How come you don't make SpongeBob a girlfriend? Why doesn't Plankton just make friends with Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob? How come you made Patrick act so dumb? It does get to be a little overwhelming because everyone tends to like him. I've gotten fan mail here, and oddly enough, a lot of it comes from prisons. understand how that is. SpongeBob is not just a television show. It really is a lifestyle for a lot of people. Jennifer Jones of Des Moines is one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. This is the SpongeBob room. There is a phenomenon of the super fan. It's curious to think about what makes them so zealous in their pursuit of the show and everything to do with the show. Got a little addicting and now it's everywhere. Her arms are covered with no less than 20 SpongeBob tattoos. I have the pineapple house too. There are a lot of people who not only watch SpongeBob a lot, they sleep in SpongeBob pajamas, they eat SpongeBob pasta. SpongeBob pencils, SpongeBob cups and cushions. I could do this all day. Me too. There's a really wide range of people that connect with the show. I watch it with the grandkids, and sometimes I watch it when I'm by myself. <laughs> is this dance called SpongeBob Dance, and I know how to do it. I love SpongeBob. SpongeBob style is being featured in magazines. Dad and actor Rob Lowe is a fan. We just wanted to make official, Barbie loves SpongeBob. <laughs> the best SpongeBob episode ever. Sailor Man. Hey, Patrick, how the are you? I was fascinated to learn that the one-time graffiti artist and now pop artist Cause really loves SpongeBob and uses his visage and his art quite a bit. It's a tribute to the broad appeal of the show. This thing's much bigger than just a kid's merchandise play. SpongeBob's penetrating the culture in ways you'd never expect. He's guest hosting Countdown in a couple of weeks. I don't think it's gone too far, do you? And a six-year-old California boy is safe this morning after falling through a hole and being trapped underground in a drainage pipe last night. Immediately after they had pulled him out, the first thing he said is that he wanted to watch SpongeBob SquarePants. People have an intimate relationship with these characters. They mean something to them, and it can get a little out of hand. Burger King had a promotion with SpongeBob, and they used a giant inflatable SpongeBob, and they put them on top of the stores. Our number one story in the countdown, it's not funny now. Put out an amber alert for a yellow sponge. SpongeBob SquarePants snatched again and again from coast to coast. It's the cartoon crime of the century. Ten different states in all. America was distraught. Who would steal SpongeBob? Some are fingering teens and college kids with the crime wave. They weren't deflating them or defacing them or anything. They were taking them. We have received ransom notes that have requested various uh, items like Krabby Patties. We think there's probably a serial SpongeBob thief. Police nationwide on the lookout for a kidnapped victim wearing square pants. We're going to be very vigilant on our, our patrols. Clint, what sick mind could be behind something like this? <laughs> Hey, 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 the balloon, and the, 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 and
what can I do for you boys? We stole a balloon! <laughs> if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Okay, time's up. Now get out. What makes great cartoon characters is a creator who has a strong vision for what his character is. And Steve Hillenburg was really the guiding light. He's the guy. You've got some seriously awesome ratings from, the, from this show, which is terrific. But what you're going to do when uh, Mr. Hillenburg uh, leaves? SpongeBob was Steve Hillenburg's baby. He worked around the clock. You're still here? Get, get out! After years and years honing and refining this idea, there was a real question if the show could go on without Steve Hillenburg. What's gonna happen to us? After the movie, I had pretty much decided that I was gonna step back and it was time to get some new blood. Oh, no. No, 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 no. The movie had just been out, and there was a real question if the show could go on without Steve Hillenburg. Trying to start running a show that's not only become a phenomenon, but that has somebody like Steve, it was such an enormous job to take on. It sure is weird around here. Kind of different. That left some pretty big shoes for Paul to fill. Paul being one of my favorite board artists, writer, directors on the show. I talked to Paul about, would you be interested in running the show? And he was. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, I just thought of an idea. Could we have a scene? He where... was pretty much the obvious choice. Well-trained in animation, has worked on a lot of shows, knows what it's like, writing, storyboarding, all those steps. There's no doubt. There's... Hello, Mrs. <laughs> It turned out he was the right guy, and it turned out he had all the right leadership qualities, too. So, Obama is spraying stimulus water on Spongebob, and Spongebob represents the financial institutions. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they'd leave us out of the politics. Rock! It really is interesting that of all the things that Barack Obama could have mentioned, that SpongeBob is one that actually gets his thumbs up. Barack Obama's favorite TV character lives in a pineapple under the sea, SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob brings us back to a more innocent time, so to speak. Kids respond to it probably because they can relate to the way he sees things. There's one called The Paper, where the entire episode is about SpongeBob picking up a piece of paper that Squidward discards and having fun with it for 11 minutes. Look, Gary, oral gummy. And at the end of the show, Squidward finally gets that piece of paper back and doesn't know what to do with it. Like, it's, it's not magical. It wasn't the paper, Squidward. I am such an idiot. Whatever it is about SpongeBob that can make a piece of paper the greatest fun toy on the planet, that's the magic of SpongeBob. There is something comforting in knowing that you can make something that maybe is shown in another country in another language and that they find it funny too and that maybe we all do have something in common. I think that's the thing I enjoy about it most. SpongeBob, it just brings a smile to everybody's face, adults and kids alike. We try to hit the gamut from the four-year-olds that are just sitting to watch the silly ha-ha stuff, and hopefully there's something in there for his dad who's sitting next to him. Crabs is a... Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? I don't think we really change. I think you develop your sense of humor early, and, and it, sort of, it sort of sticks with you. I have plenty of children in my life, and I watch it as an adult by myself. Oh, yeah. SpongeBob makes me laugh. Why, sir, I'm flattered. Really? I don't smell anything. Ah! You're on your way, kid. The wit, the edge, the brilliance. I am a uh, SpongeBob devotee. One finger, you can touch it. Sponges don't have hearts. The real ones, they don't have hearts, they don't have organs. But SpongeBob has a heart. Yes, the secret ingredient of SpongeBob SquarePants is heart.
but I think it's the heart of a four-year-old, and a heart doesn't get much purer than that. I think it's uh, it's so good-hearted and has such a nice generosity of spirit. And just the never-ending optimism of SpongeBob is, you know, yeah, he's, he's so good. He's just always optimistic, and it's and that's a great thing. I'm Tracy, planning to rule the world. <laughs> Well, good luck with that. I'm ready. Run. I've worked with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I've worked with Mike Nichols, Oliver Stone. I've worked with some pretty big people in this business. Everything is just left in the dust by SpongeBob. When all is said and done, in the history of animated cartoons, I would by all means put SpongeBob SquarePants uh, on the list of the masterpieces. All the great characters in cartoon history, you know, Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, the Pink Panther, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants, absolutely. SpongeBob has arrived. It's in the culture, it's in the zeitgeist. There's something charming and wonderful and innocent and sweet and just so completely huggable about Bob. And that's why he has and will endure. I think there's a huge future for SpongeBob. He's still got to get his Krusty Krab franchise. SpongeBob is not going away for a long, long time. I don't know. It could go 20 seasons. I hope so. I like it here. It's the best. The Best Day Ever is a song that incorporates SpongeBob's worldview and his philosophy. Very sunny, very bubbly, kind of a worldview. And that's the song that all kids come up and sing. You know, they, they, all, they all know that song. It's the best. I'm glad all that's over.